So um, firstly, as the tool we are talking about here today um, is um, about uh, the rare disease uh, describes in the set of tools that we offer uh, to the rare disease registries uh, through the URD platform uh, for rare disease registration. Uh, it's probably right to, to set a bit the frame uh, by giving you this uh, very quick overview that you see here. Uh, we presented extensively uh, the URD platform before in uh, previous meetings and may, many of you have seen it already. Uh, just to say uh, one word on the on the aim of this um, of the platform, uh, which is uh, to make uh, 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 patients' data uh, searchable and findable, and uh, uh, that they are contained, uh, as we all know, across registries, uh, hundreds of registries across Europe, uh, and uh, to put and to to the enormous fragmentation of uh, rare disease uh, uh, patients uh, across across these registries. Um, I'm having a hard time changing slides. OK. There we go. So uh, let's see now um, um, the uh, OK, what what uh, maybe I, I, I should say also is that uh, uh, this uh, work in, in making uh, patients registries searchable and findable is ensured through. Uh, let me go back through this first block here uh, that we see uh, on the upper uh, uh, left side, uh, the European Rare Disease Registry Infrastructure, we call it Erdry uh, and uh, support which supports the existing registries and the creation of new registries. Um, this support is also ensured through EU level standards. Uh, for example, we we presented uh, before the uh, set of common data elements uh, and the domain specific data elements that we are working on. Uh, for the uh, rare disease data collection, uh, data exchange uh, that you see here in, in the in the second block. In addition to to Airdrie, uh, the URD platform includes uh, this data repository, uh, which is composed uh, by the European Rare Disease Registry uh, data warehouse, uh, which we are uh, currently developing, uh, mainly for the collection of uh, specific aggregated data and the central uh, registries for the collection uh, of data on congenital anomalies, EuroCAD, and uh, data on cerebral palsy, the SCP uh, central registry. So let's go on. OK, so uh, the components of the rare disease uh, registry infrastructure, you can see them here. The main components are these three. Uh, the uh, we presented before the European Directory of Registries, Edridor, and the Central Metadata Repository. But today uh, we are discussing this third component, uh, the UPID, the pseudonymization tool uh, that we are offering uh, through um, through the Airdri. And uh, of course, this uh, tool, as mentioned before, is has been developed by the Austrian Institute of Technology, uh, and our collaborators will present a part of uh, of the pre the uh, presentation uh, today. Um, one important thing. Uh, to highlight uh, here for the users of UPID is how to actually ac access this tool through Edri. We will explain in detail in uh, previous presentations uh, this, uh, what you see here, the user case workflow. So the Edri user, uh, the Edri UPID user enters in the third user case that you see on the right. And uh, this, we call this a user contributor who needs to be both authenticated user and a verified user. Uh, this is um, the case uh, of the user that is able to input data in the directory of registry and the metadata repository. And uh, there is a one slight difference between the verified user for those two tools and the entry user, and I'll explain this a bit later. Um, once the user has requested to be verified, and I will show you how. Uh, these, uh, the verified user is mapped to a specific context, usually to one context that corresponds to one registry. 
Um, but assignment uh, of a user to multiple contexts is also possible. So um, let's see how this is concretely done. Uh, to access uh, Edri and UPID, one needs to accept the terms of use, the privacy statement, and enter uh, and go on to the page uh, where can be authenticated. Uh, this is uh, where you arrive when you are uh, you want to authenticate yourself with a EU login. If one ne uh, does not have an EU login, this is very straightforward. Uh, you can click here uh, on the bottom uh, on the bottom uh, uh, left corner of, of this uh, screen on the right, and uh, and I request an EU login. Um, with uh, the EU login, uh, the, leg, the next step is to go on to the verification uh, step. Uh, so um, you need to fill in the verification form for UPIT uh, that we check. And uh, once uh, we have verified that the user belongs to a registry ready to use the pseudonymization tool, uh, we provide this access uh, right. And uh, you can do this by going to the main page of the pseudonymization tool and click on generate pseudonym. You will not generate the pseudonym because you're not habilitated yet. You will go to the verified user uh, form, actually. Uh, so this is a specific verification form to the uh, UPID. Uh, which I explained earlier, it's a slightly different than the EDRI door and EDRI MDR because in order to um, uh, uh, have access to UPID, you need to have entered the descriptive data of your registry in the directory of registries and the semantic elements of your registry in the metadata repository. Um, so we check this, we check the users because they are not necessarily the same people who are using, uh, who are, have entered the data in Edri door and Edri MDR. So we're doing a number of, of manual, if you want, checks. Uh, and we have a lot of communication between us and the users in order to make sure that, uh, that they are, um, that they are, they belong to the right, uh, to the right registry and they belong uh, to the right uh, context. Uh, because once uh, you start using use, uh, UPID, it's for real. So we need to be very careful. You, you pseudonymize patients. And, uh, and then we make sure that uh, the, uh, the users are uh, used well. A, a little demo we have um, that I will show you in order to become familiar with that. And once uh, everything is said, we, we match them with a specific context and we give them access. Um, so uh, why have we chosen UPID as a pseudonymization tool to offer to the rare disease uh, registry uh, community uh, that join ERDRI? Because UPID is a robust pseudonymization method that offers a number of interesting characteristics, such as the prevention of uh, duplicate registration of patients, the provision of uh, distinct pseudonyms for patients in different contexts, as well as the preservation of the possibility to re-identify uh, the patient by a thir uh, trusted third party. So um, now let's see how uh, what options we have in creating uh, pseudonyms once uh, we become verified users. Uh, this scheme shows that this depends on the registry's needs, actually. Uh, directly via the EURD platform, one can pseudonymize patients one by one uh, via the EU uh, UPID web application in Airdrie or via a bulk pseudonymization software that in the, ca in the case of a backlog of patients or multiple patients that we need to, to pseudonymize at, at, at one time. Uh, pseudonymization can also be done via a software embedded in your registry uh, with uh, a direct link to UPID. An entry, uh, Airdrie enters into play here via authentication 
uh, and energy managed uh, consumer delegation. Our colleagues from AIT uh, will provide details about this last way of pseudonymization, uh, while I will uh, give you uh, some details about these first two ways um, uh, that I mentioned, the single uh, patient pseudonymization, the bulk pseudonymization via the software. We are working on a, on a user guide that we will issue soon and that you will have all details about these three uh, methods of uh, pseudonymization. So for single uh, patient pseudonymization, registration uh, of patients uh, happens through uh, the EDRI page, as I mentioned before. Uh, this is the same page as uh, I mentioned that you can go and, and uh, request to become verified users. So once you have verified users, it will work for uh, pseudonymizing uh, patients one by one. Um, so um, this is how it looks like. You you click here, you click on the generated pseudonym, and you're, you find yourself in this form. Uh, this is the demo page that we also give uh, give to 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 the users to um, uh, to um, to become familiar with the use of UPIN. The information needed here is the first name, the last name, and the date of per birth of the patient. Uh, let's see uh, you uh, case. Uh, we've we've uh, made the demo here for you. So if I have uh, John Smith uh, uh, born on the first of February 1990, I get this uh, numerical uh, element. Uh, alphanumerical um, pseudonym and uh, I registered the patient. If I want to register the patient um, again uh, in the th within the same context, uh, then um, this same uh, patient, I get, uh, I get a, a, a message from UP telling me that there's a full match in this context. Uh, we are warned and uh, we realize that this patient has already been uh, been uh, registered in this context. Um, however, if the UPIT services uh, direct a phonetic match uh, with an already registered patient, you will be asked to confirm that the entry is correct. That is, there is a check for typing errors as well. Um, this is the case where this patient has already been registered in a different context by different registry. As the UP, uh, this UP services provide context-specific uh, pseudonyms, uh, a new different pseudonym is generated in addition to an informational message that this patient has already been uh, registered in a different context. Um, so, now let's see, um, this was the, the, the single patient pseudonymization. Let's see now how the bulk pa patient pseudonymization works. Um, this is done through a dedicated software that allows registries participating to uh, Airdrie to create uh, multiple pseudonyms in one go. Uh, so the software is downloadable from uh, the Airdrie mediated link uh, between uh, registry the registry and the UPID services, and uh, the software um, uh, works expects a, a CSV file as uh, an input. Uh, once we are ready to use the software, we are prompted to uh, configure the connection to UPID services, and we provide the patient's data in a CSV file format, as shown here. Uh, in this uh, slide, uh, so here you see the patient's data being provided in a CSV format with the first uh, name, last name, and the date of birth. Um, so then uh, after up uploading the file, uh, the software uh, detects any comp data conflicts and uh, the user is prompted for a decision like in the um, single pseudonymization method that I, I mentioned to you earlier. Um, so um, the software then returns uh, a file with pseudonyms uh, as output and um, um, the 
the, uh, the file uh, it can be processed and downloaded in your uh, patient's information system. Um, and, um, and that's it, actually. Uh, there is some uh, effort to, make, to be made uh, at the end to, to transfer this file into your, into your software. So I have mentioned the two ways uh, of pseudonymization that we, we offer directly through the uh, through Erdry, uh, the single one and the and the back one. And uh, the third way, as I mentioned, is um, that of course our colleagues will uh, will say more about it. But just uh, two words from our side. This is uh, via the software, a software that should be embedded in your registries. Uh, a UPIT connector software module is needed for this. Uh, this um, uh, the, we manage via every uh, consumer delegation and uh, direct link to 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 UPIT. Uh, and uh, uh, what we can. Uh, we can uh, say about uh, this uh, software uh, connector software uh, module is that uh, we have um, you need a dedicated uh, software that you need to develop to be de to develop to connect your registration software to UPID. Uh, this uh, the software the U the connector module automatically uh, initiates encrypted connection. Uh, manage uh, authentications and decrypted data, manage conflicts, they resolve uh, and receive uh, pseudonyms uh, directly. Uh, the connection authentication will be mediated uh, by Airdrie, UP and UPID to make sure that pseudonyms are generated for your right context. And uh, um, uh, to explore the feasibility to develop such a model, uh, for sure your your developers uh, uh, will be able to to do this uh, with you. Um, Erdry, uh, from our part, we can offer two connectors, uh, one in Java language and one in PHP language, and uh, for sure my colleagues can give you more details on these. Uh, I will finish uh, my part with this last line. Um, this is um, uh, an overview of uh, the three different options uh, that are possible uh, for using UPIN. The involvement, we see the involvement of Erdry and UPIN services in authentication, verification processes and uh, the flow of patient encrypted data and pseudonyms back to the users. Um, this is uh, in indeed a very simplified uh, view uh, of this uh, complex uh, process. And uh, from our part, uh, we are happy to, to answer any questions also on these or, or on other uh, subjects that I have covered before. Uh, so uh, one thing to uh, to note, uh, as you see here, is that data is never sent to air infrastructure. It stays within uh, uh, your registries. The data is sent to UPID in uh, UPID services in an encrypted uh, form. And also that uh, to note that re-identification is possible uh, only when uh, authorized uh, by a third uh, trusted party. So thank you very much. I give the floor to, to Carl for the rest of, of the presentation. I stop sharing as well. Thank you, Andrew. Did I stop sharing? Yes, you did. OK, perfect. I will now share my slides. One second. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, perfect. Um, so as um, uh, Andre already said, um, uh, I would like to take the opportunity for the next 10-15 um, uh, minutes to discuss the question how 
the UPID services uh, could be embedded in an existing registry application. And um, the keyword here is, or the, the simple answer I would like to explain in detail is, um, there is an API, a web-based API to all the functionality that the UPID services provide. And that's the way by using the API and using authentication services um, that you can embed UPID services into an existing registry application. So when speaking about APIs, there are um, basically two groups of APIs, um, the so-called user APIs and the so-called management APIs. So the user APIs are basically um, intended for everyone working in the, regist uh, in the registries who is concerned with um, uh, patient data management, who is um, in charge of registering new patients, um, that's the user APIs. So um, you can um, basically retrieve the so-called context the user has access to. You can, as I said, register new patients and receive the pseudonyms. Um, there's also a concept that's called replication, um, meaning that you can um, replicate a patient data set from one context to another. And as Andre already has mentioned, there is also um, a, an API, API for bulk registration of patient data. That's one part of the APIs and the other part of the APIs, APIs are the so-called management APIs. They are primarily used uh, um, by system administrators um, in order to create new contexts within the UPID services, to assign new users to these contexts um, so they can work with, and of course also to remove UPID users uh, from contexts. Um, and finally, just to mention, um, here are the two endpoints for the, for the APIs. We have two services um, up and running. One is for production use um, that is um, intended for, for real world data, so to speak. And the other one, uh, we call it trial services, um, is used for demo and test um, and is uh, merely a uh, playground where uh, we can test the integration of um, registry applications with our services. So I want to start um, with the uh, before we go on, um, what do I need, in fact, um, to connect to a registry to UPID services? Before we start, is we need, of course, some sort of um, authentication. Um, and there are two options here if you want to connect a registry application uh, to UPID. Um, option one is so-called managed users, which means that um, everyone um, who is working with the registry and who wants to interact uh, with the UPID services has um, his her own user account. And the option two is something that we call delegated users, which means that um, the application, the registry application um, itself um, is authenticating with um, UPID services and um, when interacting with the APIs, um, this UPID application provides a so-called um, delegated user ID um, and acts in the name of the, this um, user. And that assumes that the registry application has, um, of course, some sort of uh, user management and um, uh, on their own. So, um, what uh, is the next thing um, uh, we need? Of course, we need a context um, where we can actually register patients uh, to. There are two options here. Um, the um, context itself can be uh, created by uh, us beforehand, before you start interacting with the um, um, UPID services. And we have a number of so-called context definition templates to choose from that provide um, a number of common data elements. Um, and among them, are, we've already heard it, the first name, last name, date of birth, there's also gender 
And at the time of writing, that uh, today we have 19 combinations um, of, of these common data elements that can be used. So that's the first thing you do. You decide on what template to use for your registry and uh, the, um, uh, the context can be created. The other thing as already mentioned is there's also a management API. So um, technically you can also use the management API to create new contexts, uh, which is done as I said, by using a predefined um, context template. So um, let's have a look at the individual APIs um, uh, a little in more depth to, to get a feeling of how these um, interactions work. I start with the user APIs. Um, if you remember, the user APIs are uh, intended um, for users who are primarily concerned with the registration of patients. So um, how does the flow of interactions work? So starting from the registry application, um, uh, you request uh, a token from an authentication provider, which in the case of uh, the UPID services um, is an active directory. So what happens here is that um, the uh, authentication provider, the active directory, um, will issue um, an authentication token that for all other interactions um, needs to be provided to interact with the UPID services. So um, taking the uh, patient registration workflows, um, what needs to be done? First, um, we request all available contexts uh, that are available for the authenticated user. The UPID services will return a list of contexts that the user has access to, and then you provide uh, the patient registration data. Uh, and as it has said before, uh, at this stage, only hashed and encrypted data is transmitted. So we, we don't have any clear names or date of births um, in our databases. So um, once the, the patient registration data is provided, uh, UPID services um, will answer um, with uh, or will provide the patient pseudonym and as at this stage record linkage is performed and and detection of uh, duplicates um, this could be either a new pseudonym or it could be an existing pseudonym and if there is a um, phonetic mismatch, there would be a proper response at this stage. And I have read in the chat earlier, um, there was a question on how can we do phonetic matches if we don't um, uh, unhash the data, which is a fair question. Uh, the answer is when you provide the patient registration data, you provide a list of hash representations. And among these um, are phonetic representations also hashed. So uh, what we can do is compare the um, phonetic hashed versions in order to detect um, these um, phonetic mismatches. Um, the same uh, flow of interaction, API interaction from um, the per perspective um, um, of a client app user, the um, the workflow is in principle the same, but here it is not um, a user that is um, authenticating with the authentication provider, but it's the client app itself that is going um, to and uh, issue uh, a token is issued again. And from now on, for all the other um, um, interactions, um, a delegated user ID, um, which is basically a GUID, a globally unique identifier is provided um, for, for uh, the interactions, but the, the flow of events is in principle the same. Coming to the bulk registration, um, we heard the bulk registration can be used to not only register one patient, but several patients at once. So the use case ob obviously here is registering existing data sets. Uh, with UPID at once at start when 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 you connect your your registry with the UPID services, 
Um, again, we have um, um, the, the same workflows, uh, the authentication part. Um, here I have illustrated the bulk registration again using a client application. But instead of providing the data of one patient, um, here you would provide a list of patients. Um, and the whole bulk registration is designed in a way that um, it can run as um, asynchronous. Um, so here you don't receive the um, um, results immediately, but you get the ID of a registration ID while your bulk registrations um, um, is processed. Um, and you can uh, then uh, make a call to a um, specific API endpoint where you can see the result and the status of the currently ongoing bulk registrations. And once they are done using that um, API endpoint, you can receive the whole list of um, pseudonyms, uh, respectively um, the results um, of the record linkage algorithm and what he has decided on all the single data sets. Um, I would like now to briefly come to the management APIs. As I said, um, they are uh, designed primarily for, for system administrators that are in charge of user management and context management within the um, registry. So there are two um, API interface for the context creation. So here you can add a new registration context. As um, said before, um, we have a list of templates to choose from. So the templates define what fields need to be filled out within the specific context. That's um, one part of the API and the other part um, of the API is the user management itself. Um, so that means that you can add and remove users to a registration context um, that can then um, register patients within the context. And it's um, important to note that adding users to a registration context is uh, just um, adding IDs to the context. It does not physically create an account with the aforementioned authentication um, provider. And as I said, when, when adding and, and removing users and the user IDs, there it is assumed um, that the registry application in front um, has its own user management where user accounts and therefore user IDs exist. So um, coming to a summary, um, how can a registry application um, connect to the UPID services? Um, they can connect using the UPID services web um, API. Um, and as I mentioned, we have two services um, in operation, one for testing and demo and for integration tests and one production service that is used for real world data collections. We provide um, two APIs, the user APIs for patient data registration and collection and the management API for um, system administrators. User authentication with UPID services um, is performed through um, an authentication provider. It's the Microsoft Active um, Directory that it is, uh, or, or a Microsoft Active Directory that's um, powering the authentication. And the um, authentication um, process can also delegate it, as I have explained, if a registry application already has an existing user management component. 